Good evening. My name is Kyle Johnson. I am the vicar at Grace Lutheran Church in Wilmington, Illinois. The plan for our Wednesday evening services this year was to give prominence to scripture through an ancient prayer practice called Lectio Divina, or Divine Reading. You can research this practice on the internet, but in a nutshell, it's a spiritual formation practice. A passage from scripture is read multiple times with periods of silence between each reading for pondering the story, reflecting, praying, and thinking, and so on. Listeners are encouraged to visualize themselves in the story as if they are watching the uh, story unfold in person. I certainly hold no claims to being authentic in how we're using this practice this evening. For example, instead of reading the same translation three times, I'll read it using three different translations. It seemed that people were greatly moved by this when we did it a few weeks ago at our first Wednesday evening Lenten service. Here's one possibility. After the first reading, just sit within the text reflecting quietly after the second reading, maybe you think about a particular word or phrase that stood out for you. After the third reading, perhaps you reflect on how this reading might apply to your life. A warning, if you're looking for a fast-paced devotional tonight, you might want to try something else. This video will have very long periods of silence between the readings. For some, this silence might become uncomfortable. We are conditioned by especially television, which pummels us with images and words and music and everything else as fast as possible so that we keep from getting bored and turn the channel. I encourage you to sit in the silence anyway. If your mind wanders, okay. Make a mental note of that, and then come back to a word or image from the lesson that caught your attention. If you received a link to this service via our Grace Lutheran email list, a PDF file was attached to that same email that has the entire service, music, prayers, and all, all in one place. I encourage you to print out this bulletin and use it to participate in the service. For those who came to this video in other ways, I don't know how to get the file to you. I'm sorry. I hope you'll still be able to find something in this video that feeds your soul tonight. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God of our salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun, and may the poor be lifted up. Asunder, set us free 
So God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures we give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Are you going to say hi? You going to say hi? Say hi to the nice people. Okay. The lesson tonight is Luke 6. 27 through 38. This first reading will be from the New Revised Standard Version. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your cloak, your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expect nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap, for the measure you give will be the measure you get back.
Luke 6, 27 to 38, using the Message Translation. To you who are ready for the truth, I say this. Love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the energies of prayer for that person. If someone slaps you in the face, stand there and take it. If someone grabs your shirt, gift wrap your best coat and make a present of it. If someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more tit-for-tat stuff. Live generously. Here is a simple rule of thumb for behavior. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you. Then grab the initiative and do it for them. If you only love the lovable, do you expect a pat on the back? Run-of-the-mill sinners do that. If you only help those who help you, do you expect a medal? Garden variety sinners do that. If you only give for what you hope to get out of it, do you think that's charity? The stingiest of pawnbrokers does that. I tell you, love your enemies. Help and give without expecting a return. You'll never, I promise, regret it. Live out this God-created identity the way our Father lives towards us, generously and graciously, even when we're at our worst. Our Father is kind. You be kind. Don't pick on people, jump on their failures, criticize their faults, unless, of course, you want the same treatment. Don't condemn those who are down. That hardness can boomerang. Be easy on people. You'll find life a lot easier. Give away your life, and you'll find life given back. Not merely given back, given back with bonus and blessing. Giving, not getting, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. Luke 6, 27 through 38, using the Common English Bible translation. But I say to you who are willing to hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on the cheek, offer the other one as well. If someone takes your coat, don't withhold your shirt either. Give to everyone who asks, and don't demand your things back from those who take them. Treat people in the same way that you want them to treat you. If you love those who love you, why should you be commended? Even sinners love those who love them. 
If you do good to those who do good to you, why should you be commended? Even sinners do that. If you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, why should you be commended? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be paid back in full. Instead, love your enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing in return. If you do, you will have a great reward. You will be acting the way children of the Most High act, for He is kind to ungrateful and wicked people. Be compassionate just as your Father is compassionate. Don't judge, and you won't be judged. Don't condemn, and you won't be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good portion, packed down, firmly shaken, and overflowing, will fall into your lap. The portion you give will determine the portion you receive in return. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This sermon, or this text, has long bothered me. Luke tells us that Jesus is expecting some really heavy-duty things of his followers. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. From anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. If anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. And if those seemingly impossible things weren't enough, we're supposed to be perfect. As someone who has always been cursed with an almost dangerous level of perfectionism, this is not a comforting statement. And dangerous, too, is one implication of a literal reading of the passage placed before us tonight. This passage could be seen as a command to accept or even encourage for example, domestic violence. Pray for your abuser. If your abuser punches you in the face, let them punch you again on the other side as well. I wonder how many abusers have used this passage to manipulate their victims into just sitting there and taking it. No, 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 no. This is where an understanding of the use of the common literary technique of hyperbole in the Bible is so important. Just do a quick internet search on this and you'll get some good commentary. The Bible is filled with hyperbole, defined on dictionary.com as obvious and intentional exaggeration and an extravagant statement or figure of speech not intended to be taken literally. Take, for example, a recent lectionary reading from John 4, 28 through 29. After an encounter with Jesus, the Samaritan woman runs back to her village and tells everyone, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. What? No, he didn't. He just told you that you have no husband and that he knew all about your marital history. Everything you've ever done? The voice of the Samaritan woman here is one of hyperbole to emphasize to everyone, the villagers and John's readers, that Jesus was something cosmically special here. Or take the first chapter of Mark that tells us that, quote, people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to be baptized by John at the Jordan River. 
all of them? Oh, come on. Hyperbole, a literary exaggeration to drive home an important point. If the Bible writers commonly made use of hyperbole to drive their points home, tonight's passage makes so much more sense. But what kind of sense? I think commentator Edward F. Marquardt sums it up very well. He writes, Again we ask, what is the meaning of these hyperboles and moral exaggerations? The answer? Don't be quick to revenge, but try to find a way of reconciliation. Don't be quick to punish someone who steals from you, but discover why they were stealing and how people can resolve that problem. Don't be quick to judge beggars. Why are these people begging and what can be done about it? Jesus wants to change the spirit of irritation, anger, and hatred inside of us. Irritation, anger, hatred, and retaliation only seem to heap gasoline on the fire of conflict. Jesus is teaching his disciples another way of dealing with revenge. Now that makes sense to me. I would add that Jesus uses hyperbole here so that his followers understand just how seriously they're supposed to take their responsibilities as followers of the way. Luke is trying to impress on the early Christian community for which he wrote his gospel just how hard it can really be to be Jesus' disciples. They should expect beatings. They should expect people to curse at them. They should expect to get mugged and have their property stolen. This is costly grace, and they best rise to the occasion here. Followers of Jesus, including us, must be willing to show love to those who themselves may be incapable of this. To do good things for those who will probably never return the favor. To give freely of our possessions to those whose selfishness would never free them to do the same. Yes, that is hard. Amen. The prayers tonight, I would invite you to respond to, let us pray to the Lord with, Lord have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who offer here in this virtual space their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the health of creation, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public, public servants, the government, and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. People of God, for what else would we pray? For my friend Leah, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you. Amen. <clears throat> Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of God which surpasses all our understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. May you have a blessed evening.